Dear Christmas, this is Natalie Morgan. I'll be live streaming from my childhood home. November 27. What's the new special episode going to be about? True love at Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, hello. Keep running into this guy I went to middle school with. I'll see you tomorrow. You sound pretty sure of that. Pretty sure. Melissa Joan Hart, Jason Priestley, and Ed Begley Jr. <laughs> this is the best Christmas ever. Dear Christmas premieres Friday, November 27th at 8. Part of It's a Wonderful Lifetime 24-7 holiday movies all season long. Hello, and welcome to the third edition of It's a Wonderful Lifetime Live. We will be doing a Q&A at the end of this amazing webinar where we will be talking about two fantastic Lifetime holiday movies, including Dear Christmas and People Presents Once Upon a Lifetime. So if you have questions, make sure to hit us up in the chat and we will ask them at the end of our conversation. Also, if you're having a great time now, make sure to join us at seven o'clock tonight where we will be joined by Kelly Rowland and the cast of Merry Little Christmas Wedding. That will be a great time. But uh, for now, we are about to have quite a treat. We are about to have the goddess of holiday movies, Melissa Joan Hart. And Melissa has a massive hat trick happening on Lifetime this year. She directed uh, Felice Navidad. She stars in Dear Christmas and she produced Once Upon a Main Street. So welcome, Melissa. Thank you. I like it being called the hat trick. I, I was thinking it's like, <laughs> what's it called in bowling when you get three strikes? It's a, it's a turkey. It's a turkey. Right? Yeah, well, that would be, I guess, appropriate. It's almost like <laughs> <laughs> So how do you decide which you're going to direct, which you want to star, and how did that all come about? Um, it sort of depends. So I had gone into this year um, with a deal with Lifetime to direct one and to star in one and producing all of them. Um, and so we were just trying to figure out which one, which one we would do when, you know, should we be, should we, should I, you know, which one's going to come first and et cetera, et cetera. And I was at Access Hollywood when um, Mario Lopez like kind of cornered me in my dressing room. I was like, I got to talk to you. You got to direct my movie and your mom's got to produce it. And I was like, okay. So that was going to be, that one was already written and ready to go. So that was going to be first up. And we were trying to get it going for March because I actually wanted some snow on the mountains and no trees with green leaves. And um, of course, as we all know, there was a shutdown like the week we were supposed to start. So we had to wait as long as possible. And we were finally able, we were the first production to be up and running by June. So it was awesome that we were able to do that. Um, and we kind of pioneered it for a lot of the unions and a lot of the um, industry to be able to get a production up and running safely during the COVID era. And so we were able, then we, there was a movie we were actually supposed to make that we haven't made yet, but it's a big one. And we decided to hold off on it because it needs a lot of, it requires a lot of background, a lot of cast. So we decided to flip flop it with one we were going to do next year, Dear Christmas. But the writers took a stab at rewriting it. And if you look at Dear Christmas, um, it was it was written for the COVID era. Um, it was rewritten, I should say, for the COVID era. If you look at it, there's only six speaking parts plus like two cameos of couples that mm -hmm. we shot elsewhere off, uh, off campus, basically. Um, so you have Robin Gibbons as my boss. You have Jason Priestley as... Uh, Chris Massey, Chris and Mr. Christmas. And then you have um, Ed Begley and um, Faith Prince and Nikki Willen as my family. So you'll see like me with Robin, me with Jason. Jason sometimes comes to the family, but you'll never see more than six people in a room. Um, you'll hear things like, oh, there's a party going on. You should come outside. Or we got to get the cookies ready before the guests arrive or running into the ball and everybody's gone, you know? So <laughs> you'll notice that like nobody's around, but um yeah, so we, we snowballed, literally snowballed um, <laughs> Feliz Navidad right into Dear Christmas. And then it was like, well, Lifetime was like, we, we want another one. You guys have a bubble of crew working together well in Nevada, in the Lake Tahoe area. What else can we do? And that's where we came upon Once Upon a Main Street and Vanessa and Ryan and the wonderful cast over there. And so um, we were able to just keep going. And because, you know, things are weird this year. It was like, if it's working, let's keep going. You know, we, we usually get one day off a weekend and our crew is really tight. Our um, DP is uh, with the camera operator and our PA is dating the makeup artist. And, you know, so it was like a very tight crew where nobody's going out, nobody's hanging out, you know? So we'd go to the beach on the weekends cause it was the summertime by the time we were shooting <laughs> together on like a Saturday afternoon. 
and it would just be us. And we were in our little bubble. And so we just were able to keep making movies. And so, you know, they, I did want to direct another one, but I had to take some time off for family this summer. And, uh, but I'll be back next year. We've got a few in the works for next year. So don't worry. But meanwhile, we've got a whole wonderful lineup for the next week for you guys. Yes, it's amazing. So I want to go back. You brought up that Dear Christmas actually does reference the COVID era. And it does a really beautiful job, I think, of celebrating first responders and honoring them. And that's a little different from any of the other holiday movies I've seen this year. Can you talk a little bit about why that was important to get in there? And yeah, don't wait. reveal the way that it's like it's really, really sweet. So I don't think we should reveal how it's celebrated. So yes, okay, all right. Let me see if I can work my way around that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. So there's little references to it. Like for example, in Feliz Navidad, you'll see like reindeer decorations with masks on and stuff like that. But we don't have the background in masks. We don't have background, which is a big nod to the whole thing. But we do a shout out to the healthcare workers um, in a way. Um, in a really lovely way that actually I'm able to mimic in World Vision. I work with World Vision and do their gift catalog. And my gift in the world, here's a little tip. My, <laughs> my gift in the World Vision catalog is a lot like the symbol we use in the movie to represent the health care, the shout out to the healthcare workers and the thank you to them. And um, yeah, so we, we don't ignore the season that we're in, but we also don't focus on it you know, we, we know everybody has fatigue and we know everybody wants to escape for the holidays and forget about this crazy pandemic. And so we make sure we do that. Um, but with also paying attention to the time that it is. And then when you watch it back many years from now, hopefully you'll be like, that was 2020. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, what is it about Natalie that appealed to you in this one? You know, it's interesting. Um, I am such a, uh, what's the word? I, I am, I, I, I love love. Like I am obsessed with, I've, I've always been like boy crazy and just like thinking about when am I gonna fall in love and what's, you know, and I was so focused on that my whole life and it's, and she's not like that. So it was totally opposite of me to play somebody who is like a little bit of a, not a pessimist about love. I mean, she does a holiday love podcast, but she's not so sure she trusts it. Like during the holidays, especially, is that the time to trust love when you know everything's so easy and there's hope and joy and cinnamon in the air? You know, is that the time to fall in love or is it just the magical part of the season that makes you feel like you're in love? And so she's a skeptic. And so I'm definitely not. <laughs> I am all like, I'm all in. Let's do this. You look cute. Come on. You know, so um, she, it's funny because it's just totally opposite of me. So it was a little tricky to play in that sense. And also when you're playing someone who's, career is about love, but they don't really believe in it. It can be a little tricky. So it was, it was fun, but also just, and one of the best parts about producing these movies is getting to work with people I adore. Cause this industry there's, there's, you know, there's the life's too short category of like people you don't really, ever really want to work with again. And then there's the people like, are you dying to work with again? Like Robin Givens is one of those people I did God's not dead too with her. And it was like, I couldn't wait to get back just to be able to hang out with her. Like sharing a screen with her is just, I mean, Boomerang is one of my favorite movies, but like to be like, like in the same room as her and just have these conversations, sit in the makeup chair next to her. And, um, and especially during this crazy COVID era, like I know with Faith Prince, she was, who plays my mom in Dear Christmas, um, she's taking care of her elderly mom. And so she hadn't been around anybody. And she'd play my, she played my mother-in-law on Sabrina and on Melissa and Joey. So this time she actually got to play my real mom. And uh, I think I was the first person that hugged her during the, pandemic like she had gone four or five months with her mom and just being super cautious and not being but she took a chance knowing me and my mother and knowing that we would take care of her and she showed up and we'd all been tested numerous times and we're in our bubble and um and we're in the makeup room and she and I are about to be on set together without masks anyway so I was like oh my god it's so good to see you and hugged her and she was like it, it her. <laughs> at first she was like no and then she was like and then she relaxed into the hug and she was just and she wouldn't let go and it was like one of those moments of like, oh, this is such a different time. Like people need hugs. We need More hugs. than ever, but they should. And that's where Lifetime Christmas yeah. movies are the hug. I always say that. I also always say that they're like a cup of hot chocolate, which yeah. brings me to my next question. Did you ever make the Mr. Christmas hot chocolate with the cinnamon and the red pepper flakes? I am a, I don't know what you would call it. A purist, a naturalist, I don't know. I am like just like tea, no sugar. Like, well, that's not true. I put sweetener in it, but no milk. Like, you know, I'm like, I want my hot chocolate, just chocolate and milk, 
maybe some marshmallows, but I'm not putting red pepper flakes and stuff in my, I don't even like cinnamon. Like now I'm, I'm like a child. It's funny when I order anything on a menu, it's like right from the children's menu. I'll have the chicken tenders. Oh, you don't want the, um, you know, whatever pepper deli with the truffle bit. Nope. Thank you. Do you just have regular mac and cheese? Maybe craft. That'd be fantastic. You know? So speaking of Jason, I mean, you are such a pro with these movies. You've now been part of many a magical romantic duo. How did some of them come together? How, like, do you say, oh, I want to work with Jason Priestley? Or well, I make, I definitely make it? my wish list. <laughs> definitely make my wish list. And then Lifetime goes through it and, you know, does a little research. And, you know, there's some people they want to work with, some people they haven't worked with, some people they have worked with, maybe too much, that kind of thing. So, I mean, I'm one of the people that they probably shouldn't use in the future because I've done so many. <laughs> No, you got to keep going. But I wanted to work with him so badly. I was such a 90210 fan when I was doing my show, Clarissa Explains It All. I mean, (laughs) that was the only show I got to watch on TV growing up because as a teenager, because I was working so much on Clarissa, my hours on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday were insane. So Wednesday was the one time I got home in time to watch a TV show. And that's when 90210 happened to be on. So that was my go-to show for at least four years. And to be able to finally work with him was just like, yay. And he is just the nicest guy. And I just find that like people that work in television are such professionals. They come ready for anything. And I mean, <laughs> you know, they like sometimes making these movies is tough. We're in the dead of summer wearing huge winter coats, scarves, and sh- pretending to shiver by a fireplace. And you're really just sweating snowballs. And, you know, you're, and so trying to like, you can get a little moody. These are long hours. We don't have the best food on set. We're not really taking care of ourselves. We're not able to get to the gym often, you know? So um, it can be a little rough, but you know, he was just, he's such a pro and I love, I've been so lucky to work with so many amazing, like I've done a few of these with um, Barry Watson, who I love and adore. Mm -hmm. Um, I've done a few with Mario Lopez, of course who each time just gets a little bit more stingy about wearing that coat in the summer heat. (laughs) But next time I'll have to do it in winter so he doesn't have to complain about the coat. But, um, you know, I've just been so lucky to have all these fantastic leading men. And like, and that's what's so fun about producing these is really finding the talent. And I always put together a wish list on, um, like I I take screenshots of people's photos on on the internet. And then I put a little like layout together, like a dream board. And I present that to the network and we, so like for Christmas reservations that we did last year for Lifetime, I mean, like I insisted, I work with Marky Post again, who was my mom in Holiday in Handcuffs. Mm -hmm. I was like, I have to have Marky Post. And she was supposed to have a twin or a sister. We changed it to sister as opposed to twin. And um, Gigi Rice, who's married to Tim McGinley, who I had just been working with. I wanted Ted in the movie and he played a perfect part of a, a like snazzy hotshot skier. And his wife, Gigi Rice, looks just like Marky Post. And I was like, I have to work with them. And like, I put together this dream board and I got it. It was amazing. So who's on the dream board for next year or down the road? That's a really good question. Um, Well, I would have loved to rest his soul, Luke Perry. I would have loved Mm. to work with Luke. Um, I mean, it's so hard because I always want to go back to my, my good old boys of Barry Watson and Mario Lopez. But Ryan McPartland, who's in Once Upon a Main Street, is very dashing and very lovely. And you'll talk to him in a minute. But, um, you know, that could be a fun matchup or maybe I get back together with Joey Lawrence or I don't know. know. Oh, another one with Joey Lawrence. I don't don't think anyone would complain about that. (laughs) (laughs) So before we bring them all back, uh, the the amazing cast of Once Upon a Main Street, can you talk a little bit about that role of producing and what about that appeals to you? Because I know you actually were doing that. You were the boss from afar for this movie. Yeah, this one, I actually couldn't be on set, but my mother, so a lot of people don't know this, but my mother is the powerhouse behind our company, Heartbreak Films. So she's the one who found the comic book of Sabrina the Teenage Witch uh, on a playground in New York City, made it a movie, kept telling them it would be a great TV show and nobody would listen to her (laughs) until she went in the editing bay and cut it together as a trailer, presented it to the networks, got an offer in the room for TGIF's time slot on ABC, and all of a sudden we had a TV show. And she is just, I mean, boss lady extreme, as anyone can tell you that has worked with her. Um, she wants to know what the wardrobe is that's involved. She wants to, and by the way, this was a total family production for me too. Not only my mother producing, my sister-in-law, Sally Cruz, doing all the wardrobe on all three movies back to back, designing it. And then my my nephew was the boom operator. My son was a PA for a few of the movies. And um, we love to keep it in the family. And like, you know, when we know that people do a good job, 
because this is like being all, you know, you're, you're in kind of like a little bit of a, of a TV boot camp when you're doing this. So, you know, to keep it strong and keep it tight and especially in COVID era to keep it mm-hmm. within the family is always helpful. But, um, but yeah, so what, now I lost my plate. Now I forget what I was saying. <laughs> About what do you love about producing? What what's the oh yeah that, so that you know being able to role? like um, not just be an actor for hire and not just be there actually having a voice actually having a say and you know the casting or the, like I love directing because I love picking the locations or the music and um, you know and mm-hmm. and being creatively involved and helping when you read a script you know, you get to really kind of make that vision come true. So I love, and I love mixing it up. Like I was directing Feliz Navidad and I was like, oh, this is exhausting. This is so much work. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I can't wait to get to Dear Christmas and just act. Then I was acting and probably four days in, I turned to one of the PAs and I was like, oh, I just want to be directing again. This is frustrating. Like, I don't want to act anymore. <laughs> this is embarrassing. And, you know, and he was like, seriously, like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but I get the most of best, best of both worlds. And then with producing, that's just the icing on the cake for me because my mom is, powerhouse behind the scenes doing all the everyday work when I'm directing or I'm acting um and then when I'm when I have to take off for family leave she's there got she's got my back and she's covering our company you know so um and she's the one who finds these projects puts them together has the connections at lifetime so really she should be in some of these panels because she can explain (laughs) it all to you um all right. Melissa's mom explains it all, perhaps. Exactly. So, Hold Melissa, on. hang tight. Okay. We are, Melissa's going to stay with us. We are going to check out the amazing trailer for People Presents, Once Upon a Main Street, and then we will be joined, in addition to Melissa, by Vanessa Lachey, Ryan McPartland, Patrick Duffy, and Polly Draper. Yay. November 29th. You're not cute, you know. You're a terrible liar. These bitter rivals are teaming up. Are you both sure about this? To help save a small town Christmas. Wish I could help you with that ladder. But will they fall for each other first? (laughs) I'm glad to see you two are getting along. Vanessa Lachey, Ryan McPartland, and Patrick Duffy. People present Once Upon a Main Street. Premieres November 29th at 8. Part of It's a Wonderful Lifetime 24-7 holiday movies all season long. Welcome back. We are here now with the cast of People Presents Once Upon a Main Street. I am Brienne Heldman from People. Uh, we are here with Polly Draper and Patrick Duffy and Ryan Captain Awesome McPartland uh, and Polly Draper and Vanessa Lachey. So guys, welcome. This movie is so much fun. And I'm just curious because everybody has such great chemistry throughout this movie. What were your first impressions of each other when you first met on set? Ryan's too tall. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was your first impression. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much it. <laughs> and we all know Vanessa's was how nice Patrick smelled. Oh yeah. <laughs> Patrick, you were dream he smelled you guys, he smells so dreamy. I literally would be like, Patrick's on set. <laughs> and I would sniff him out. Um, the first time I met Ryan, it was actually before the movie. It was like two days before we left. And he was like, you know, we should probably get together and do a script read through and just kind of read it out loud together. And I was like, cool. Or we can go have a drink with our spouses and just hang out. And he was like, okay. And we did it. And we ended up talking for like five hours until they kicked us out. We were in a parking lot because obviously we were being socially distant. And it was a table in a parking lot. And I said to him, in my mind, like I wanted to get to know you, but I wanted to see you with your wife. And in the other side of my mind, I'm leaving my husband with a three-year-old, five-year-old and eight-year-old. I wanted him to see the guy that I'm going to be hanging out with for three weeks. And it was the best advice ever that she had. We had had the best time. Let's do this. Let's let's get together. And, And the chemistry of all four of us was amazing, actually. And we all got to hang out afterwards too. It was great. Yeah, I was relieved because I was directing it. And when I saw the two of them together, I was like, oh, good. Oh, these guys are, well, they're both, well, they're all three of them are so hot. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. <laughs> How does that make you feel, Patrick? They're so charismatic. They're all so charismatic. And it, it made it, it made it very easy to direct. As okay. are you, Polly. 
<laughs> well, I already told Patrick that I think that my mom's dream come true was casting him in the part because um, I'm pretty sure that's been like a lifelong thing for her. So yeah, she well, was kind of giddy around. Them. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> but we all were. <laughs> you mentioned that you, you know, having to film in this pandemic, what, like, what were some of the protocols that you guys had to follow or the challenges that they presented? Well, um, somebody can go besides me because I didn't have any challenges. Holly, you directed. You, you, um, fell in. you know, every three days. Well, um, I don't know if you guys had to do this. Did you have to get the thing stuck? Every on? other day, the, the, the director day. thinking. Okay. Yeah. Um, the 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 um, nose wow. thing. Oh, you guys did a nose one and not the blood. Oh, I had. Uh, yeah, the um, directors guild insists on the nose one. Yeah, I I know we did. So we did the nose one for Felice Navidad but only once a week at that time. By the time we did Dear Christmas, so that was in June, by July, we were doing a finger prick three times a week for cast, and you guys probably did this too, but like cast, um, uh, makeup, hair, wardrobe, and sound. Um, anyone that was in contact three times a week. And then by the time they got to you guys, so I, yeah, I think the DGA by then had the white sheet or white page or whatever they call the union rules out. And the, they didn't know how deep to go at the time, so they went all the way to the brain. <laughs> hey, sinus. I've had that happen. Around it, as much as it explains a lot. <laughs> I had, I actually taped one of um, Ryan's swabbing, and then we posted it on Instagram. And just the backlash he got from like his his like friends who are guys are like, "Come on, Ryan, man up!" He's literally like, I think there's a moment where he goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did almost throw up. I mean, it was like so far back. Well, Vanessa nicknamed him Princess. So. Yeah, yeah. Aww. Very masculine. Just to keep the chemistry going, you know, because we we had to be rivals. So. Yeah, yeah. Were there any silver linings to that experience, or or even just things you learned about production that you'd never had to think about, or things you learned to appreciate that you maybe didn't? I imagine it was generally a much smaller crew and. Um, tighter silver production. Li yeah, the silver lining was getting to work again. I mean, that was, we would have done anything to get back to, to set and to be around each other and, and have that, yep. like with our families, we had this close knit circle of cast and crew that could really only be around each other. Yeah, and where we well, were, COVID, well, go, sorry, go ahead, Patrick. I've got no, one. I was just going to say that it, it was the first time we really, that I really wore a mask because I was directing the first one. So, um, all wearing a mask, you know, at first seems so inconvenient. And when my kids were going back to school and everyone was saying, how can kids wear masks? How, I was like, it's amazing how used to it you can actually get. And our, um, our DP, who was on all three of the movies, at one point, I'll never forget him picking up his Starbucks cup and going to put it in his mouth and the straw is hitting his mask. And he's like, it was Ryan. Ryan's like, what? hey, what's... And I was like, you have a mask on, dude. You know, so like you kind of got used to it, which is weird. Like, you know, you didn't imagine that that was ever going to happen. Yeah. You can get used to pretty much anything. Yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think one of our things was the, um, you know, we weren't allowed to have extras or there was no stunt coordinator. There was no, there was nothing, uh, there was no, there were no frills. So the, one of the silver linings was that there were a lot of people on the street that we just picked up a, randomly. Like this one guy hands me his card and says, he has a Santa Claus costume. So I said, oh, you want, can you go home and get it? Because then we can use you in this scene. So <laughs> that happened. And that Wait. was me, by the way. Oh. <laughs> that's yeah. how Patrick got his job. Yeah. That's how I got my job. <laughs> that's how you got the job. <laughs> so you didn't have any stunt doubles for that whole scene where the cake batter falls and uh, stunt coordinator Vanessa and Ryan double. fall on top of each other? Nope. Nope. We, we right. <laughs> we all desperately tried to figure that one out together. It was like I said I wanted to be in an action movie. Like I always envisioned like Angelina Jolie, and I'm like, but I'll take slipping in batter. And I remember <laughs> those were my boots, and I was like, these are oh, yeah. suede. <laughs> it was just this whole thing. You I'm had like, these gorgeous clothes that you wore, and they all were like, you know, all the scenes were like you're slipping in batter. You've got like this prickly Christmas tree wreath all over your perfect, you know, designer blouse. Or you, and but she, back to what Ryan was saying, it, and and Polly would be such a trooper. I'm like, 
you know what? We're working. So I was like, screw the shoes or, oh, well, it's a shirt. We were just like, it was the first thing I think any of us have done since March. And we were just so grateful that we, whenever they would say jump, you'd be like, okay, this, how high? Or do this, we're like, okay, okay. And you just knew there was a reason behind it. And I think for us, it just further solidified that bond. And we had a lot to laugh about. There was, that's the only thing you could do was just laugh about it. Like you couldn't, you know, you couldn't how make a big bruises, deal about it. How many bruises did you have by the end of it, <laughs> Vanessa? I had a picture. Cause so we ended up a text chain with me, my husband and Ryan and Danielle. And like, I would, always, we would just text. And I sent a picture of my legs and it literally looked like I was attacked. And I was like, this was a Christmas movie. <laughs> but I bruise easy. I bruise That's easy. a great physical comedian. It's just, that, that was another boom because the hey. two of them are just, really play I mean the whole movie has such comedy in it and the two of them are such good comedians but also physical comedians so it's not like you had to spell anything out they would just I will out. say as being sort of an outsider someone who wasn't on set every day this movie is one of my favorites I mean it is so adorable you guys all have such amazing <laughs> chemistry and that like I mean, it is, Vanessa, your timing, like I am jealous of what you got to do in this movie. It is, it reminds me of Holiday in Handcuffs, one of the first ones I ever did, which we're, we were allowed to be funny and we were allowed to be, um, you know, have that physical comedy and, and, um, and you guys really pulled it off in such a beautiful way. And it's one of my favorite movies. Oh, oh thanks, nice Melissa. That's very sweet. I will say like, you, Paula set the stage and she was definitely like the ringleader. She's like, okay, guys, we're going to go over here for testing. And this is how I measure this room. And this is what I want. So she set the stage. And then when Polly came in, she just added this color to it. And I, I believe this, and I didn't get to tell you this Polly, because we didn't have like an official wrap party because obviously COVID, yeah. but I do believe from Patrick, just riffing with you, you guys were having jokes and smart aleck comments to you just kind of like making Ryan and I feel so comfortable that we can literally just sit there and talk to you like a friend and not like you were talking down to us, like a director, you were talking to us. Um, I believe you set the whole mood for our chemistry and our fun because we were having fun. You know, it was never like, we were never annoyed to go shoot another scene. We're like, we're gonna shoot another scene because we can do something fun. We're like, all right, let's do it. You know, or we're gonna add something. All right, let's try it. And um, that's a big, <laughs> that's, uh, so good. that was you. It feels so good. And Patrick spent the whole time saying, did you even read the script to me? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I kept, go, I kept going, go, go over there. Oh wait, no, you can't go over there. You're not even in this thing, go away. <laughs> Like, when are you gonna read the script for this movie? <laughs> I loved that, and it just broke the ice. She came out, and he was like, "Did you even read this? We're not." And she's like, "I should probably read it." And I'm like, "This is we're good." Lunch. <laughs> did my hey? Did my wink in the di dinner scene make the cut to, towards Patrick? It was supposed to be to Vanessa, but I got lost in Patrick's eyes. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a whole new dimension. Of There's an Easter egg to look for. Yeah. <laughs> I don't but what I do want to ask Patrick is about the moment after the whole drama with the cake batter falling. Patrick sure. makes this amazing expression. And I'm wondering if you practiced that in the mirror or how many takes did that take? <laughs> because it is hilarious. Uh, no, it was a surprise. I don't know what I did. And when I came back, Polly said, oh, that was great. Do it again. And I went, oh, crap. I don't know what I did. How can I do it again? So uh, at least they got the one. You couldn't. Yeah, you couldn't do it again. No. <laughs> yeah, it was the first take. Oh, I've, I'm glad you got that one. because it's so I good. That Thank one. God. <laughs> yeah. roll the cameras that was you know what they say when you're when you're my age you're not as good as you once were but you're good once as you ever were that's so that's, cool. that's pretty much me i think there's a whole new movie out there that is all of patrick's scenes after she yells cut he continues and it is just <laughs> comedy gold he just exactly. if he's walking he scoots out the door and he keeps talking it just it's so fun to be around you patrick well let's do another one melissa it's in your court now Come yeah on, oh. no we oh. can do once upon a second street once upon a third street yeah, there you go. twice upon, upon a main street once on. upon a back alley. twice upon a main street <laughs> i like it i like it well 
that leads me to my next question. What is it about these holiday movies from a work perspective as actors that is so appealing? Like why holiday movies? I keep saying it's the, you know, the, this, this holiday brings up two things. Like it brings up hope, joy, peace. Like everybody has these words and this vision of this, you know, yummy foods, family gifts, the whole thing. But on the other side of that, there's a lot of pain and a lot of suffering going on in the world always around this time. And especially this year. And I think people want to escape from the busyness of the season and all things they have to do. And sort of whether they lost someone this year or they lost their job or they can't put food on the table for the kids. There's something about this, this genre that just, you, you know what you're getting. It's a nice, safe, warm, magical little Christmas blanket of whether you're baking cookies or you're wrapping gifts, you, you know how it's gonna be okay in these movies. You're not gonna get some weird surprise. <laughs> and so I think that it gives everyone a warm and fuzzy escapism. And I think that's why people like them so much. The Christmas buoy. You know, it just keeps everybody afloat and above yeah. the surface. You know. Did you say booty or buoy? <laughs> <laughs> See what we're talking about? That's it. That's the guy right there. <laughs> boys, boys, the there's time one. for that later. The Christmas booty. <laughs> my my uh my brother and his wife have a Christmas movie bingo where Ooh. when hot chocolate comes out, that they, they, you know, fill in a, a they put their bingo piece on. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. It, Lifetime it, has that. Lifetime oh, has that with each of their movies. Yeah, how many how many times they don't kiss <laughs> when they kiss under missile. Well, this year they're not we're not supposed to do kisses. Wait, but uh I know that like um Jason and I were supposed to have a near miss. But yeah. we might have changed that. I'm not telling you. But oh. Uh, oh. No, did you guys hear this plexiglass thing? People were saying people kissing through there somebody are photos me, of it. Oh, we had How do you a, shoot that? Hardcore, we had hardcore sex in ours, did they not? <laughs> <laughs> did I, was but, that cut? But from we my had it through first? plexiglass. <laughs> we were using plexiglass. <laughs> that's, that's the key. That's an unexpected the worst thing. Worst job on time. the worst job on the set was cleaning the oh! oh my goodness gracious! This <laughs> this panel's taking a turn. <laughs> this, this, I get cut out of the panel. <laughs> no, we um. Um. <laughs> yeah, I love what you say. It's always the near the near misses. It's like, will they, won't they, will they, won't they? And that's yeah. a lot in ours because that's what what I was drawn to in the script and what I think Ryan and I, when we did sit down to read it together after the dinner with our couple, our spouses, um, we found this like, it's a way, I'm not comparing anything to The Notebook because The Notebook sits on a shelf by itself with a beautiful, it's that movie. But we said how they would kind of like bicker, but out of love. And there was always an underlying like line of attraction, but it was also like, I'm right. No, I'm right. And it's like, ooh. And so we have that throughout the movie. And then it, what I love is it really truly makes you go, wait, do they really get together or do they not? So um, yeah. So you'll have to tune in. Yeah, but you guys yeah. played that so well. That's, people don't, um, don't, people don't really know how hard that it, that that, kind of keeping the bubble underneath a fighting, you know, when when two people are bickering, it can really be a nasty thing. And these two had such elegance and joy and um, and effervescence to their arguing, almost as if that was, you saw them just falling in love during that, as they were turning each other, you know, as they were saying terrible insults to each other. <laughs> Well, One of the can I tell my husband that that I have <laughs> elegance in my arguing? Read, read beneath the, sur the surface, underneath the surface, Nick. Can yeah. you sit? <laughs> I can argue with yeah. elegance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, tell your spouses it's fun arguing. It's fun. Uh -huh. But honestly, there's also such a sweet moment in it. Uh, su such a um, a, a, one of the most touching things I've seen was Patrick's. A reunion with his daughter. I mean, oh, uh, spoiler alert! Lovely. Well, a reunion, you know, a, a, a coming together is, you know, that's what these Christmas movies do. As soon as you, you know, in the first, you know, in the first ten minutes, they, the, the beauty is that it gives the, the window, that everybody then wants to see because they know it's going to work out. 
They just yeah. know it's going to work out. That's the Christmas movie, but it's how it's going to work out. Oh no, it's going to be oh, because it's going. To... So yeah. it's the it's a, a an enjoyable game that we all play. So you okay. can't really give away the plot because you know that these two beauties are going to get together. Yeah, you know the old man is going to be the old man. I mean, there's certain things that are constant. I don't know. I think. I think the character of Rowena was kind of surprised. She was amazing. <laughs> I would say, talk about hot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hot. Oh, awesome. I, I love you too. as Rowena. Oh, <laughs> okay. How was directing yourself? Well, your mother, Melissa, just sprung that one on me as soon as I got there. I thought that they'd hired that character. I pictured her kind of like a, I don't know, not like, <laughs> and she just asked if I'd play it like in the so I went into just a, a mild panic trying to figure it out and then I thought oh no okay I'll need those big owl glasses and then I can do it <laughs> and then everything was fine <laughs> hey, one little thing right yeah it was one little thing yeah. He made me, I, I did a cameo in um, Feliz Navidad and I realized when I got, when I, when it came to the day that I had to do that, first of all, you know, figuring out doing your makeup plus directing, like, how yeah. am I going to fit this in the day? Right. And then I realized when I was getting made up that day, I was like, I was nervous and I was like, what's wrong with me? Like, <laughs> I've this whole movie and I can't do this piece, but I got nervous too. I, but I was like, oh, I haven't acted in a year. I've only been directing. Mm -hmm. And I hear I was stepping back, but then I went to do Dear Christmas and I was like, God, I haven't done this in a while. Do I even know how? Like, you know, like, <laughs> no, right. It's, 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 a, it's an adjustment. Hats, right. Yeah. You're like, did you yeah. do direct director? Totally. So it was I funny when you would come out like full Rowena gear and then I you know. would be directing and we would look, we're like, <laughs> it would be like, do we really have to listen to it? We're like, wait a minute. Cause she'd have her like earrings and the glasses and the makeup. And she's like, no, 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 I'm, it's for after lunch, but go to. I'm like <laughs> one of my favorite things about these holiday movies is knowing they were filmed in the summer and trying to figure out what the snow was made of. So can you spoil that for us? What's the sure. snow made of in this one? You guys got a full snow truck, right? You actually are like for the first two movies we didn't have snow, and then you guys got like real snow. You you got real snow, didn't you? Some real no, snow. no, because we were supposed to. We almost did in March, um, but we shut down. So we started in June. It was all gone. So we did digital snow in Feliz Navidad, and we only had it in one section because the movie was supposed to take place in Arizona. For Dear Christmas, we did some blanketing, and we did some, um, gosh, I guess it was all CGI, really. I guess it was all, um, some of it was like just the batting and some flake stuff. But you guys had a lot of snow. Well, we had um, not real snow. We had um, the you know the stuff in diapers, <laughs> you know, those little Oop. little tiny things in diapers, Oop. baby diapers. <laughs> well up when that's what the snow is made out of. But it made for good snowballs. Yeah, they yes. had great snowballs. But they're wet. It's really wet. It's yeah. It's, it's good for. Good. For when you're trying to hit Vanessa your nose Vanessa was up. doing a lot of uh, jumping onto snow banks that were really crash pads and stuff and, she, and jumping into the air and the snow, when it got on her, remember when you fell on the, on the crash pad and you had like it, everywhere. everywhere and it doesn't come off. So during the scene, it's not like it melts. It just stays there while she, you know. I remember I would come home so we would do like a full day whether it was like a 10 or 12 hour and then I would come home and I would go to change and it was like literally falling out of my clothes yeah. and <laughs> undergarments I'm like there's the snow but it was the continuity that to your point Polly so there'd be a scene where I'd have like a big patch and then we'd have to go shoot the other angle and they're like oh no there's snow so they're yeah. trying to match the fake snow on the hair <laughs> that was the that was art it, well and shout out to Sally and wardrobe Oh, oh yeah. my gosh! Did an incredible job on all three movies. Awesome. There's but a with really the heat. picture too. Oh, yeah. me, there's a sweet picture of me like picking out snow out of your hair, and it looks very romantic. Like they, <laughs> amazing. So sweet. But the reality was, I was apologizing because I was supposed to miss her with a snowball, and he pelted and me, nailed her, <laughs> and I came over, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And she got up, looked at me like I can't believe it. I'm like. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm the picture so looks so kind. He's holding me and I'm looking up. And then and then if you had audio, I go, you little shit. <laughs> of, uh, you I mean, pelted me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. But it looks so real. It, I, I must <laughs> Yeah. Say, it did. Uh, it looks so it did. Real. 
especially in the in the final days scene that we were doing with the reunion with the daughter in that street, that That's main true. street, it looks so beautiful and That's so beautiful. real. I'm always stunned that you know such a a, a, a a, a magic trick can be done. And that's before CGI comes in and, and you know, Absolutely. dots the I's and crosses the T's. Just what the crew can do to make a, a background look like it's 20 degrees. Meanwhile, you're sweating bullets because you're wearing, you know, too many clothes, but it looks fantastic. It really and did. They, I was done. around all day thinking of different places to put it and how to put it on and they're, I mean, it's, it's really fun. And, and at one point, Ryan has to get hit by a bunch of slush, which was, <laughs> Ryan, you should probably talk about how that went. <laughs> no, that, that'd be, I'm sure you'll see it on Vanessa's Instagram. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so everybody tune in to Vanessa's Instagram. They let me do one of the slush and they're like, okay, you've had your fun, now go. And I was like, okay. It was payback, it was payback. For that <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was, we actually had a heat wave during our filming. Um, there was a, a massive heat wave and we got to like over a hundred on a couple of days. Um, that was, that was another little fun layer. But again, everyone was so happy to be at work. We're like, but oh, we're happy to be working. Plus that, plus fires. Um, the, oh, and there were yeah. so many fires that um, you couldn't really ever see the sun, even though it was hot, like a, like an oven. Yeah. And um, which actually was a horrifying thing, but it was good for shooting because there wasn't there wasn't much um, variation in the the sky because it was all orange. Very creepy. Mm. All right, so on a hopefully on a more festive note, yeah, uh, we're going to move on to the Q and A from our viewers. The first question is for Melissa. What fuels your passion more, acting or directing? Really, I mean, it, it's in the past, it's always been directing um, because I feel like I have more creative input and I'm more creatively filled and I get to, you know, read something on a page and make it come alive and finding those locations and putting the casts and, you know, helping with the wardrobe design and like just putting it all together. Sound design is one of my favorite things. Um, that's really exciting to me, but it's so much work and my brain goes crazy. And then I'm like, I just want to put on pretty clothes and say funny things. And so I go, I like to go back and forth. So literally when I was doing Police Navidad, I was like, all right, I'm like so exhausted. I've been, we did musical numbers in that. We have this whole acapella competition. And I was just, I was like, I cannot, I was, I'm not a choreographer. I've never filmed anything live like this before. So, you know, trying to get that with one camera and the budget we have. Um, and then I was just exhausted. And then I literally walked on the set of Dear Christmas and I was like, I, I don't want to do this either. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to, I, I want to just, I just want to direct now. Like, you know, one week of acting and I was like relieved. And then all of a sudden I was like, okay, no, I don't want to, I don't want to put on makeup anymore. Like, I just want to, <laughs> you know, be the boss. <laughs> so, um, I, I really go back and forth and they really kind of help me out in both hands, you know, like doing one makes me better at the other. And, and I, I, I love the fact that I get to do both. Awesome. Another question is um, for everyone. What is your favorite Christmas tradition? And we will start with Vanessa. Oh, my favorite Christmas tradition is the Friday after Thanksgiving where we put up the tree. Um, it started with me and Nick before kids at like almost midnight. We would pull everything down and I would start making us cocktails and we would stay up and we would drink, and we'd have fun. And then now with kids, we're like, we gotta go to bed at like 9.30 so that we can be up with the kids at six and then get the tree going. But it's still like, it's still our favorite tradition because I would start Christmas the day after Halloween if I had say, but Nick is, he's very much like, let's get through Halloween, then our birthday, then Thanksgiving. And so I'm like this until the Friday after Thanksgiving. You, uh, I've seen your Instagram and Halloween is like the biggest holiday I've <laughs> ever seen, at least. Wait till Christmas. Christmas. Oh my God, I can't wait. Yeah. I love Christmas. <laughs> Polly, you're up. What's your favorite tradition? Um, my entire extended family usually gets together, won't this year, but, and we have an art contest and all of us are really awful at art. I mean, we have no talent at all. 
but we do these art contests and name them weird things and then give bizarre prizes for them. That's like paintings? Um, it's whatever. It could be it could be found art like rocks from outside that are painted or um, a, a, you know uh, like what's it called art where you uh, person when you're as a person you do art what's it called performance art performance, performance. art there's <laughs> performance art there's uh, just you really have to read this script Polly <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I sometimes I have trouble getting some words out. That was <laughs> thank God that you're here to help me. But yes. um, but anyway, that that that's our big family tradition. Um, also, I write a letter from Santa to both my kids ever since they were little, and I'm left-handed. And when I was younger, they taught me in school to to write left-handed as this certain way. But left-handed naturally for me is like this. So I have two different handwritings. So oh. the schizophrenia aspect of that has made them believe made them believe in Santa for a long time because they were like, no, that's not mom's handwriting. Mom's Wait, handwriting. what do you mean? Like There's that. no Santa? Wait a um, minute. Oh, right, exactly. Well, that's that that's another spoiler. That, that was another sad story is because um my my son came in one time when I was filling the stockings and I went. Oh, okay. So now you know, and he's he's like, "Mom, come on." I've known <laughs> he's like, "Well." <laughs> so, yeah. Does Patrick, how about you? Well, uh, my favorite part of the holidays is being able to put brandy in your hot cocoa legally. <laughs> I mean, I feel like no one's judging if you do it in July. Yeah. Well, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you're pulled over. You know, well, so. okay, no. <laughs> There's a little judgment then. Little judgment. Yeah, yeah. They're so Patrick, out of have you worked a lot with Michael Gross? No, I've never worked with Michael Gross. So I, I, we did Christmas <laughs> reservations together last year, and I just feel like you two would just get along so well. <laughs> <laughs> we got to put you two in a movie next year. There we, we'll there we go. Go right ahead. That's I'm going on Melissa's <laughs> vision board. We talked about. There we go. Fun. <laughs> Ryan, how about you? Well, unlike um, Vanessa's husband, Nick, I have no singing voice, but I still insist on singing Christmas carols to my kids before bed. <laughs> and they are now 11 and 13 years old. And they're just like, can you just shut the door? <laughs> 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 but, but I'm not going to stop. I'll never stop. Hey, Not Ryan, when you come over to watch the movie with us, will you sing Christmas carols? Of, co of course, with Nick backing me up. <laughs> so I'll put that on Instagram for you. <laughs> Just to make fun of you, not because she wants you there. Right, and definitely. <laughs> is, is Nick's song the Christmas song? Is it going to be part of the movie? We, yeah. You bet. Excited yeah. about that. That's a big yeah. announcement. I just, another spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it a secret? Oh, dear. I might be used to some of Nick's holiday songs. Hey! hey! Oh, I need to get you the new album. So there's a new album called Let It Snow that Once Upon a Main Street song is on. How about that? I'll call it that. Um, I'll send it to you. This features my favorite rendition of Little Drummer Boy ever. Ooh. That's, That's one of my favorite rendition. songs. Mm -hmm. You know, I, always, I said it earlier in an interview. It's because they, um, Nick always says we weren't the dancing boy band group and he's right my husband has two left feet god love him um but they all came from acapella backgrounds so they actually they like really genuinely know how to sing so come holiday time when a lot of it is at acapella and it's the harmonizing they just they really shine Ooh, yeah. i'm super fangirling but wait Melissa, <laughs> what is your <laughs> now okay okay i won't argue elegantly with him <laughs> <laughs> What's Melissa, your, what's your tradition? I, I, I just have tradition. so many traditions. It's ridiculous. Like from the elf on the shelf to, you know, um, yeah. we attempt to do things like cut down our own tree that never works, you know, attempt to have a cookie making day, which usually ends up being me making the cookies. But like, there, I just feel like everything is a tradition, whether we eat this Southern casserole thing called poppy seed chicken on, or, or lasagna, it's one or the other on Christmas Eve, opening one gift on Christmas Eve. My, my favorite though, that comes from my childhood is 
that my parents always had to check for Santa. Um, they had to, we had to wake up. There were a lot of kids in my family. My mom has seven kids and there's eight total with my dad's daughter. And um, we had to stay at the top of the stairs and wait for them to check for Santa, which I think was their way of just making sure we're all together. But the anticipation of sitting at the top of the stairs and waiting to know if Santa's down there and did he come, did he leave me present? And, um, <laughs> and so I passed that on to my kid. They have to wake up, they have to wake us up. They have to wait at the top of the stairs and we have to go check. And it's still like, I love to get a picture of them all just waiting. Cause I think that that moment is like the moment you walk through the Disneyland gates or, you know, just like, it's that, as everyone says, Christmas morning, it's that Christmas morning feeling of like, but knowing like it's about to happen, but it hasn't happened yet. You're just like about to blow, <laughs> you know? And I just think there's something so magical about that. And, and I think no matter how old you are, you can still have that feeling on Christmas morning. Awesome. All right, we'll get to another uh, viewer question. For, this one's for Patrick. Which is more fun for you, playing a nice character in this movie or getting to be part of a manipulative cast a la Bobby Ewing? Well, you know, they're both the same because even my manipulative cast, Bobby was the good guy. So, you know, it was all, you know, I, I basically have lived in a Christmas movie my whole life. Uh, you know, uh, I love playing the good guy. It's what people expect from me. I think, you know, I, 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 I'm a totem in terms of representing a certain kind of role. And, uh, you know, and I don't seek out negative roles in order to make a point. I find that sort of superfluous to my life. So um, I look forward to these things. And, and to be quite honest, it's a wonderful position to be in in a movie like this, where you look at the script and you go, oh, I have four scenes. And oh, they have 26 scenes. I have an easy <laughs> schedule. And then you walk in, they give you two lines and the lines are so well written, you hit it out of the park and you go have you know, lunch. And they sit there and work until three in the morning. It's, it's the perfect time in my life right now to be old and feeble. <laughs> you get to sit a lot in this, I noticed. So that <laughs> the sequel is going to have much more Patrick. Oh, yeah, we're, they're going to put it's in gonna, it's gonna be... mess with your head. <laughs> Guys, I, Patrick is, and you all know this, but you might not. Like he's, you're being very humble. Patrick did, there were days where even if he did just have one or two lines, as soon as Polly said action and he came onto the set and delivered, whether it was his physical or the verbal, it just, you were like, oh, like he, you can switch it and you just kick it up a notch. And I think that, you know, I know Ryan and I were like, okay, the scenes with Patrick, like get it together because to her point, like whatever we were doing, when, when it came down to it, you always brought that heart, you brought that depth. I think you grounded all of us. Absolutely. And honestly, like I looked at the line and I was like, okay, yeah, he has a line in this scene. And then when you would say it, it was just so in a good way, heavy and full. And I was like, that's why he's Patrick Duffy. <laughs> that's why. And, also, oh my God. I and that's why I'm falling in cake batter because if all those fails, just let her fall. <laughs> <laughs> but I also think that with you, you play the good guy, but partly why you play it interestingly is you're such an awful human being in real life. Well, that's true. <laughs> I mean, the first thing I said to you, Polly, it was so horrible and it came back and bit me because what? I didn't know you were acting in the show. And <laughs> you, came up, you came up as a director and you told me something, a compliment perhaps. And I said, I said, well, I don't really believe it. A good thing you're not an actress because you're terrible you're at really it. Oh! <laughs> I told him how good he was. And he said, well, good thing you're not an actress because you, you're so bad at it. I can tell you think I sucked or something like that. <laughs> and, and I said, yeah, I am an actress. But <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I've never seen you. And I'm like, hmm, let me just reel off, I don't know, whatever credits I have. Like, let me look up on IND. <laughs> just say 30 something, just say 30 something. And she's, <laughs> she's scrolling down her list of credits. She got like, all the way back what to- What about this? Okay, what about that? <laughs> and you he probably knew them all. Yeah. <laughs> Before we have me wrap up, I just, I want to do a very quick this or that round. It's going to be very quick speed round. Do you want, do you like marshmallows or whipped cream on your hot chocolate? Whipped cream. Whipped cream. Whipped cream. Big marshmallows. Ooh. I'm having hot good. chocolate with you, Patrick. <laughs> on your tree, white lights or colored lights? White. Oh, white. Colored lights. Colored. Colored. White elephants or secret Santas? White elephant. We, white elephants. Easy. White elephant. 
<laughs> Patrick, uh, do you know Anna. Anna? A, a secret elephant. I I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> it's hard to keep an elephant secret, by the way. I mean, you you walk into the room, so, especially a know. white one. It's the secret yeah, white yeah. elephant in the room. But, uh, so I'll, I'll pass on that. <laughs> uh, Christmas cookies or pumpkin pie? Pumpkin cookies. Pumpkin cookies. pie. Pie. I think both. Pie. Wait, did the guys say pumpkin and the girls all said cookies? Yeah, I, I said both. Oh, you said both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> real tree or fake tree? Oh, real. 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 Huh? Unless the fake one smells like me, right, Vanessa? Oh. I mean, I'll take a Duffy tree in a 12 foot, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, holy night or silent night? Silent night. Silent night, I think. What was the first one? Oh, holy oh, night holy. or silent oh, night? Oh, holy night. Oh, holy oh, night, night, 98 degrees version. You want to hear my version? Because that's my go-to. I have to send them, every year I have to send to my girlfriends back in LA a, vid a video of me singing, Oh Holy Night, am I Kermit the Frog voice? Can you please? Yes, please, can you? Can you, you that? That's the perfect oh, end to this, please. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, we would do that together, boys. So. Every year. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. You, you got Next that. Next year, it's you and me. How how has that not made it into we'll one of your like holiday movies? Ninety-seven and a half degrees, because we're not quite there. We're not quite there. Yeah, not quite. <laughs> that is an amazing note. You're all welcome. That's to... <laughs> oh, I just got sent one more of this or that. Rudolph or Frosty? Oh, Frosty. Rudolph. Frosty. Oh, we can't pick a favorite, can we? I know, right? But I did. I felt that about pumpkin pie and cookies. Everybody else is getting <laughs> sentimental about Rudolph and Frosty. Yeah. <laughs> you can't you can't do frosty the snowman when you're doing christmas in july yeah. no you're right god our snowman was like t kept tilting every time she every time vanessa tried to pack it down with so-called snow it would be tilting one way or the other because it was on a pole oh well anyway we're leaving well guys i'll tell you the good thing about uh so polly next like i think maybe you, when you were thinking about snow we had snow for christmas reservations which we did last year we filmed in may and we had like an epic late winter up there in tahoe and i we actually had scenes on a ski mountain and i got to ski in snow in may and then we had a snowball fight and like we had snowmen in that movie so we did have quite a bit of snow in that movie so we, luckily we didn't have any sad frosties but Oh, well, Melissa, Ryan, Polly, Patrick, and Vanessa, thank you so, so much for joining us today. Everyone needs to mark their calendars for the premieres of Dear Christmas, which is next Friday, November 27th at 8 p.m. on Lifetime. And People Presents Once Upon a Main Street, Sunday, November 29th at 8 p.m. on Lifetime. And if you enjoyed this event, please make sure to sign up for the next two events. Lifetime Live cast panels, are, there's another one tonight at 7 o'clock with Kelly Rowland and the cast of Merry Little Christmas Wedding. And the next one is on Friday, December 4th, featuring the cast of several movies, including Ali Stroker, Fran Drescher, Jackie Lai, and many, many more. And before we go, let's take a look at the new Lifetime Holiday movies premiering this weekend, which includes A Taste of Christmas Tonight, Felice Navidad, directed by Melissa Joan Hart, Tomorrow Night, and Homemade Christmas, on Sunday night, all at 8 p.m. Happy holidays, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Roll those trailers. November 20th. You know I've been wanting to open my own restaurant for years. It'll take a Christmas miracle to open. Impossible. There's always a way. <laughs> the feast of Natale is off. Will they find the ingredients for love along the way? Do you like Stefano? No. Annie Kruger, Gilles Marini, and Nia Vardalis. I finally found a place that feels like home. A Taste of Christmas premieres November 20th at 8. Part of It's a Wonderful Lifetime 24-7 holiday movies all season long. Is it possible to have too much Christmas spirit? November 21st. You got a match. This dad is single and ready to mingle. You look like the type of principal I wish I had. Qualified? Will he swipe right on Christmas love? The line between dorky and hilarious is tricky. Mario Lopez, Anna Lynn McCord, and Paulina Chavez. I'm amazing. The food or the company? Feliz Navidad. Premieres November 21st at 8. Part of It's a Wonderful Lifetime 24-7 holiday movies all season long. November 22nd. Can you help me? I live for this. This holiday helper works hard. 
Are you passionate about this? I am passionate about any job I do. So she can slay hard. <gasps> You're just goofing around. Looks like a lot more than that. Michelle Argyris and Travis Nelson. Are you up for the challenge? Always. Homemade Christmas premieres Sunday, November 22nd at 8. Part of It's a Wonderful Lifetime, 24-7 holiday movies all season long.